Jim Lee's X-Men issue eight. Got to continue with this stuff. This is the Jim Lee that I was completely in love with, though, as I've said, I uh, was having a hard time acknowledging that while I loved his work, it just it started to change and wasn't quite what I wanted it to be anymore. But at the time, this was still fun. So new storyline. We did the first the the first storyline. The first was it three issues were the last ones with the Claremont, and then there was issues what four, five, six, and seven were you know storyline with Wolverine and Omega Red and that, that whole thing. It kind of amounted to nothing, really, and that's what this stuff continues to be. But Bishop has been introduced, and um, you know he was introduced into the pages of Uncanny X Men uh, by Wills Portacio, and this is where we're getting to see Jim Lee introduced. The you know now the characters basically joined the X Men. Um, this is the the next stage of the the storyline. Sorry, I got lost in thought there. I'm like. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if I missed a story point, but uh, not yet. But um, yeah, Bishop has kind of joined the X-Men and we're going to have Gambit versus Bishop. Now, why? Well, those of us who know the storyline that um, Bishop accuses Gambit of something pretty messed up. But we get into it. So what do we got? Jim Lee, plot and pencil, Scott Lobdell script, Lee and T-Bear, Art T-Bear on inks. So not sure. I'm pretty sure... This is Art T-Bear. There's a certain kind of inking thing going on that feels like Art T-Bear's kind of inking style, and I don't like it. I'm trying to see if you can see these. He's got these lines where well, there's this line coming across, but there's little, like, bubbly open areas on it. This, I, I don't know how to explain it. It's like these little these lines it doesn't look like a scott williams line it, and it's not because he's not on the inks on this it's art t-bear and it's okay but it just it looks different it's starting to look different it's not the same um i was so deep into the wolverine character at this time i only wanted to see more about him they kept introducing all these mysterious elements to the character and i'm like i want to know more show me more which is how they kept getting us to come back and keep reading the thing. But Wolverine's kind of trying to dig into the past of this whole Omega Red thing that he was, um, you know, the last couple issues that he was going through that whole storyline. He's digging into his past here. And um, Wolverine just tells Jubilee and uh, Cyclops to go away. They're like, hey, Professor's debut in his latest ex-dude, Topside. Name's Bishop. Now I don't feel too bad about Jubilation. Like, she's like, yeah, he's got a silly name. Wolverine just tells him to get lost, and Cyclops is like, all right, let's go. And then we got, here we got Bishop being introduced to the team proper. Like, he's now going to be officially a part of the team. The story's called Tooth and Claw. Yeah, I bet it is. But the whole story with Bishop is that he's from the future. There's a big storyline component, and um, the X-Men, this kind of proper team of X-Men, are like legends to him. And now he's like stuck in the past and forced to fight with them. And so he reveres them all. Like he comes up and meets Forge, but Bishop calls him Genesis. And he's like, no, no, close. The name's Forge. And he's like, yeah, for the moment. So it's like this guy has future knowledge of the X-Men, which could be good or bad. Who knows, right? But Bishop is, he's a little on edge. He's a little serious. And they're trying to get him just like, hey, just let's meet the team. You're part of us now. Let's, let's just lighten up. So he takes him to a room to meet the X-Men that are there. You got, he calls them Cyclops. He's like, the legends hail you as the first X-Men. He's like, I met Jean Grey, but you must be Dr. Henry McCoy, known as the Beast. You were Randall's most read philosopher. Bishop arrived with two other buddies who ended up dead. Um... And then, but he's like, you must be Gambit. There's very little written about you. And he's like, just the way I like it. And then he refers to Jubilee. He's like, you are Jubilation. Then he quietly says, the last X-Men. And Jubilee's like, really? Cool. So Gambit's like, well, she's the last X-Men. How does that explain you? And then this is like a flashback to something that happened before where Jean Grey's getting killed. Basically, he goes on this little rampage right here. Um, well, he, he shouted out Gambit's name, which was the, the interesting thing. It says, LeBeau. 
Gambit's like, it's not awesome to shout out somebody's name without, I hate the dialogue here. To, it's, he says something in, I don't know, Creole, French or some bullshit. I don't know nothing. It's, it's not good to go shouting a body's name without that body's permission. And so Bishop is saying this explains the witnesses reluctance to share his recollections regarding Gambit, telling us to refer back to Uncanny X-Men 2... was it? Such a tiny little font there. 287? 267. No, 287. Um, he's basically saying the witness was the last person to see the X-Men alive before they were betrayed by one of their own. So in Gambit's future, or sorry, rather, in Bishop's future... The X-Men were betrayed by one of their own, and they were all killed. And he's like, I think it's Gambit. Gambit's the one who betrays the X-Men and costs them their lives. So Bishop demands that Professor scan his thoughts to like determine his loyalty. And everyone's like, hey, wait, that's unnecessary. That's insulting. And Professor X is like, no, I don't do that. So Jean Grey, she's like, you know, this is, you know... This is hard for all of us, but um, maybe we should discuss this calmly over a picnic. And Bishop is like, Bishop is like, are you fucking kidding me? I just tell you of your impending deaths at the hands of a traitor, and you suggest a picnic. And Professor X is like, well, we do our thinking, our best thinking on a full stomach, but to the lake, but everyone. So, I guess we're gonna have a picnic. Gambit's like, hey, because Rogue was standing up for him. And so thus begins a little bit more their kind of flirty relationship. And Bishop is like, dude, why the fuck does everyone act like this isn't a big deal? And she's like, dude, look, look at it this way. He's been at our side, fighting at our side for several months. You've been in the mansion for an hour. Who would you trust? So Wolverine's back here. He's raging, having a little moment. Professor X shows up trying to connect with them. Um... Professor X is the only one that Wolverine will kind of show respect to. And he's just like, I don't know who I am. I don't, my, my thoughts are, my memories are full of jumbled thoughts that may not be mine. I don't remember anything. Blah, blah, blah. This was all fine. Um, once again, the inking is just not the same. And I got to say, I just, I never understood. What in the fuck is with Professor X's eyebrows? Like, I always wondered what the hell that was. And I guess I went back and if I looked... That was some kind of designy element that was thrown into the Professor X way back when he was first created. But most people just avoid that. Like, it's an unnecessary, stupid thing. But it looks so dumb. Like, he's a mutant, so he's got weird eyebrows. It's so fucking dumb. But speaking about things that are not dumb and things that we like, here the X-Men are at the edge of a nearby river. Um, Beast is in the back. There's Jubilee. Jean Grey is talking to Scott about something. And Scott's a little distracted. Who's in the water here, right? She's, and she's like, blah, blah, blah. What do you think? And he's like, uh, about what? She's like, about the professor. Cyclops is a little distracted. What is he distracted by? Oh, shit. Pikachu's coming out of the water. I mean, Psylocke. And, um, you know, Jim Lee's drawn some of the hottest babes ever, and Psylocke's always been one of the hottest babes ever. And I like that they kind of acknowledge the fact that, you know, a man would can't help but notice this shit. I mean, there, there's levels of respect that you can't cross, and he's just kind of looking, I guess, and you don't do that right next to your girlfriend, potential wife. I mean, you don't do it at all, but... I mean, it's a very human thing. She's the hottest babe in the world in a swimsuit crawling out of the water. That being said, they all, she fights in an outfit skimpier than this almost. Like, he's seen this. Whatever. It's just a moment to kind of create some drama. Psylocke looking sexy. Jean Grey getting pissed off. It's fine. Um, you know what's funny is that this is... I did a little exercise a long time ago. I've got to dig them out. I've got them here somewhere where I took this drawing... And I, I printed it out. I, I found the black and white artwork. I printed it out. I traced it in pencil and then inked it just to like, just to do the basic body. Like I, I removed the clothes. I mean, I didn't detail it exactly. I just want to like, let's just look at the body minus this ridiculous outfit. And Jim Lee's anatomy actually looks really weird. Um, it was just kind of an interesting thing to just take it away and remove the color, the black and white, and just get it down to the basic lines of the the body and it looks strange he does better figure work i mean this is okay but 
I don't know. It's kind of okay. Another thing that always kind of bothered me was this panel right here where Psylocke is like drying her face. There. Where's the rest of her long hair? Just conveniently down the back side of her, other side of her head and down her neck, like super long black hair, but there it looks super short. Anyway, out of all the drawings I really like, I say this a lot, there's another one of these little small little drawings that I think looks awesome. I think that drawing of Psylocke with the towel around her and just her figure walking away, I think it looks great. Anyway, we're back with um, Bishop and Storm and they're talking and you know we hear that Jean, after this whole confrontation, she kind of ejects Cyclops into the water. You hear a splash and you know Bishop is like, holy shit, somebody's screaming. You see, he grabs his gun and is ready to go into battle and Storm's like, dude, you gotta calm down. Like, your first reaction is to go into guns blazing and he's like, well, in the world I come from, this is how things are. She's like, I know, but that's not what's going on right now. You gotta, you gotta adjust to the era that we're living in. I always thought that that face on Storm looked just great. I mean, she's got weird eyebrows too. And I don't think the, like the white eyes thing really works. It only works in comics, but it wouldn't work in a live action movie. It never did. But this, this facial structure, the eyes, nose, mouth, the shape of the jaw, it looks great. And Bishop looks great there too. I mean, Jim Lee is, he's legit. He's really good. This is another one of those human moments I really enjoy. Rogue and Gambit are having their flirty little relationship. And, I mean, Rogue, drawn by Jim Lee, is one of the hottest girls, like, ever. And her kind of bubbly, fun personality. And there's a little bit of the element of, oh, no one can touch her, so it's forbidden fruit. And Gambit's all about that. He's like, she's like, I made this, you know, this food with my own two hands. And he's like, if I made a list of things to do with your own two hands, stern gumbo wouldn't be on it and makes her drop her plate. And she's like, yeah, you certainly know how to get under, get under a girl's skin. He's like, I'm trying. So he's flirting with her big time. And I like that he's reaching out. He's like, he wants to try and touch her. Like, let's just try this. Let me see what happens. God, I guess I should address this while I'm thinking about it. I was doing a lot of inking. I was doing some drawing and I got ink on my hands here and um, I got dirty fingernails. I've had some people shout that out and it's funny how that matters to some people. Um, so it's, it's kind of funny. It's never anything that ever really comes up. I mean, hey, my fingernails aren't dirty here. It's just my thumbs because I work, but I got ink all over my dirty hands. So if, that, if you're one of those people that it bugs you, sorry. I don't do a channel for people with fetishes about their hands on here. Maybe I should, right? But anyway, forgive my inky fingers, but I draw. Anyway, not to trail off there. But Gambit wants to touch her. I mean, we all do, right? I mean, I'd touch her. She wouldn't want me to, but I would. But Rogue bumps right into Bishop. And Bishop is standing there, and he's like, you know... I want you to know, Gambit, I'm on to you, and I'm watching your every move. And Gambit's like, man, shut the fuck up, and jabs him in the chest. Like, you want to go? Let's go. And Bishop's like, great, boom, bunches the shit out of him, sends him flying, smacks into Rogue, tumbles her off, I guess, a nearby cliff somehow into the water. So Gambit's a little pissed. I mean, he did start it. He jabs him. It's like, somebody can have words with you, but you laid hands on him. Boom, Bishop's going to knock him out. This is another one of these Jim Lee things where he, I think the portrayal of Gambit's powers just looks awesome. He just grabs a handful of rocks and dirt and just, just flinging it up like that. This energy blast, blowing them up because Gambit can charge up things. I think it looks great. It works so well. Looks fantastic. So he's standing there like, all right, let's go. Bishop pulls a gun. And so Gambit gets a pie and charges it up. Like, that's is going to be his weapon. Off in the distance comes Rogue. Another kind of awesome little drawing. But uh, Gambit chucks that pie. Bishop ducks, and it splatters on her face. Boom! And I guess it kind of explodes, because he did charge it up. But G Gambit's like, oops. And she's like, oops. I spent four hours sweating over a hot stove. And the best you can offer is... Oops. Jim Lee knows how to sell a draw. I should make this the... <laughs> this is 
This should be the thumbnail to the video. That'll be clickbait. Should I? Or should I do this, the one that people will recognize? We'll see. But I love how it kind of stops them all. Like, Bishop and Gambit start chuckling. They're like, <laughs> oh, God. You're like, oh, suddenly all the tension is dissolved. And... Um, Bishop is still like, all right, I, I'm still like, he's like, he's, he's chilling out, but he's like, I don't trust this guy. I'm going to keep my eyes on him. I always thought that was a great sexy shot of Rogue. Anyway, they're standing there talking how they got to kind of, look, you're from a future that may or may not happen. You just got to like, let things play out how they're going to go. I always like this drawing. This kind of cute and flirty and fun with the way that you know, Rogue's got her arms around Gambit. Like, they were kind of a fun, flirty couple. They they kind of worked. Out of the blue, somebody shoots the shit out of them. Some chick shows up, and she's talking in the same kind of, like, Creole. My business is with LeBeau. If, you, if the rest of you leave this minute, I'll let you live. The way they make these characters talk sometimes is ridiculous. Bishop shoots back at her, and Gambit stops him. He's like, wait, hold on, hold on, stop. That's no way to treat... A lady, especially when that lady is my wife. <laughs> Rogue. It's like, wait, 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 wait. What? We all were like, because we, we didn't know anything about Gambit at all. Anyway, this chick shows up and her name's Belladonna Bodero. Bodro? Bodro? Belladonna Boudro. I don't know how to speak these languages, these weird names. Anyway, she shows up and says there's some shit going on where Gambit comes from. Like, clans, wars, fighting. And Gambit's got to get in there and uh, help. This was a great shot of Gambit, I thought. I think his costume is ridiculous. I was, It was always kind of like... It's cool, his hair with this little kind of mask thing that he wears. And then the, the, the long trench coat kind of hid this ridiculous outfit but we remove this coat and what in the hell is he wearing what is this weird thing around his neck and this metallic body suit it just doesn't make any sense but somehow Jim Lee makes it look awesome anyway basically Gambit's like yeah I married this chick but um he had to do this duel and he ended up killing a guy and he was kicked out of his the, the clan where he comes from and then he ended up on his own and blah 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 they gotta go to um back to um Jesus Christ where, Mardi Gras where, where is that supposed to be I'm sorry I'm stupid I can't think about it anyway my brain's not working but we know we're talking about Creoles Mardi Gras that whole thing so anyway, they got to go there, and um, so the team's going to like, all right, we're all going to go. Rogue's kind of like the way the text word bubble's kind of shaped, like she's kind of struggling with this whole thing. She's kind of having fun flirting with Gambit, and suddenly her kind of feelings are hurt. This is another one of those face shots of uh, Psylocke I thought was just so great. It's such a simple drawing. Eyes, nose, mouth. It looks so good. The personality on Jubilee works. Wolverine shows up. He's like, I'm done being a grumpy fuck. You need help? And Cyclops is like, great, thanks. Let's go. Meanwhile, New Orleans. Jesus Christ. There's a sign that says it. I knew that. Nolens. Anyway, you got this cop late at night sleeping on the job, but his alarm goes off. There's somebody going 120 miles an hour. It goes zipping by him, rocket fast. He's like, God damn, lousy two-wheeled speed freak, yank bikers think they can drive any which way they please. Not in my town. So he chases down this beating asshole pulls him over as fucking ghost rider and the cop goes running and ghost rider takes off like oh shit that's awesome great skull uh, kind of an okay drawing of ghost rider there now this story wraps up i believe in in this ghost rider issue and i did pick it up and i have it but the artist, whoever it was, it was just so hard to like look at the X-Men and Ghost Rider as drawn by somebody else. It just was not as good. Um, it just, I didn't like it. It kind of sucked. I can't blame them because, you know, they were doing the best they could. Who could really compare it to Jim Lee? But 
that's it. So I, again, some of the my most favorite parts of these books are kind of the more human moments. Like Wolverine being a grump is one thing. Bringing a new guy into the team and kind of explaining to him like this is what the world's going to be like for you now. Starting a conflict between two guys so the drama's there. Having a Cyclops like just eyeballing Psylocke like we all would be. Jean Grey kind of getting pissed off at him. Um, the flirty relationship between Gambit and Rogue was fun. I liked it. They were very likable characters. They're young. They're warriors. They're heroes. They're hot. They're going to bang each other if they could. It's just, it's fun. It worked. This little kind of fun little moment with the pie splattering all over Rogue. And then more drama with this chick who shows up that's Gambit's wife. Spoilers, she ends up dead and we're all sad. Not really. So anyway, you know, it's it's fun. Jim Lee's artwork still had moments that looked really good. I like that face there. I like the poses on the sword fighting there. These faces were great. It was fun. You know, not quite as great as some of his previous stuff, but fun. But anyway, that's it. That's all. X-Men number eight. We're approaching the end of Jim Lee's X-Men run. He does, what, nine, ten, and I think eleven are the last issues. And it ends on a long shot Mojo World storyline, which was just, like, talk about a dumb way to end. Really sucked. Because... I, long shot was done way before I ever got into the comics, and I never cared about him. I have no connection to him, and wasn't an interesting story to me. So anyway, but this was fun. Enough kind of fun character moments to make it kind of a, a fun read. So that's it. That's all we got for this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.